Welcome back to another Terranscapes video. Uh, my name is Mike and I will be your guide this evening on this uh, video journey. Uh, it is evening at least for me. Uh, and um, the drink of the evening is a sidecar. Uh, sidecar is Cointreau, uh, brandy, and a little bit of lemon juice. Um, I've been an advocate of resurrecting cocktails for a little while now. Uh, and I have to say it is quite tasty. It's a little sour. But that's good, it works. But you're not here about cocktails. That's not why you're here. But I'll force you from time to time to talk about them or listen to me talk about them. Uh, we're going to take a look at uh, some sped up footage of me uh, doing the shading work on the rocks for the orc board. This technique is uh, my slightly modified version of the technique that I first discovered from uh, Mr. Bragdon. He sells rock molds, Bragdon rock molds, and I will put a link to that uh, site in the uh, description down below. If you're new to the channel and new to these molds, um, welcome. Welcome. That always makes, I get very excited when I have new viewers. Um, and I don't know you exactly are new because I don't know you yet. If you leave a comment, I will. But I'm still excited that you're here. So thank you for joining me. Uh, so the very, very short is that these molds are uh, uh, rock molds that are made from natural rocks. I took these molds, I improved them, fixed them, did my own splicing together of them, made a new mold from that, and I'm casting the rocks you're about to see in a urethane plastic. If you are interested in learning more about these, you can go back into the back catalog and see the uh, review I did. So take a look in the review playlist of the molds, as well as the work I did on the ocean board project. And in that project, I used them uh, when I was creating the islands uh, for that so you can go to that playlist and you can find the video there so those are in the uh, there's the back finger you got to go back and take a look at those and go and find them because if I put a link to everything in every video I, I I don't know I have too many videos now so so before I blather on um, I think this might be the only existing record of this kind of a technique. I have not seen it anywhere, so um, I hope you appreciate it. I'll try to bring you in on the nuances of it, and um, hopefully you can learn something from it or be inspired. So uh, let's go over to the computer, and I'll show you that footage, and we'll come back in a minute. So this process um, starts with a base of gesso as its foundation. I'm using Liquitex gesso. Uh, this is um, a, a solid foundation for painting. Uh, of course, it's, um, that's what it's used for. Um, and in this instance, um, it gives a, a nice matte finish. Um, and of course, with its white, it's not competing uh, with um, colors that are applied over it, as this will be a, a sort of a transparent um, effect that I'm going to be creating here. Uh, it is, um, like I said, very thick, so I've added some water to it to allow me to get it into these deep fissures. This rock face is very deeply textured, uh, and so some real work is needed to get in and all those cracks. And the cave in particular that I'm working on is doubly difficult because uh, some areas I can only get to when it's upside down, and some I can only get to when it's upside right, and some are difficult to get to any, anyway. Um, I've used uh, different um, 
uh, speeds uh, indicated on the screen to show you this process uh, and some will be slower and some will be faster but uh, there's a lot to show and not a lot of time uh, to get it in here you notice I'm using a, um, a can of um, air duster and right now I'm heating it up uh, with my heat gun because um, I'm spraying so much that it, it starts to cool down and it won't um, have much force. And what I'm doing is I'm driving the gesso into the cracks um, that are not easily, uh, you know, gotten a brush into it. And that's particularly helpful, especially along the, um, the sort of scattered rocks at the bottom. I've left a lot of negative space in those rocks and they're not very brush friendly. So um, getting that into those areas is a, a, a premium concern um, because, uh, you know, I want everything coated so it doesn't show um, discoloration um, when I later paint it. And you'll notice here I'm using a flashlight to get into that cave uh, because the uh, contrast is very hard to see in the dark and so I'm really trying to identify the areas that will be seen. Uh, once I've coated it with gesso, um, I am going to apply a wash of tempera paint. Uh, now this method is not exactly the same as the Bragdon system, but um, it, this was recommended to me, I think by Vicki on Patreon. Um, she used alcohol, I think if it's Vicki, and um, I decided to go with water using alcohol as a wetting agent. Um, it acts as a bit of a surfactant and um, helps it to dry a little more quickly. Uh, so you saw me testing some uh, opacities, trying to figure out how dark to make it. And um, I ended up going with a, a pretty dark color uh, because I really want those cracks, right, to be um, very, very dark in uh, all of those recesses. The cave, a perennial uh, challenge. Uh, the cave uh, was uh, and has been uh, very difficult to work in. I might um, tackle it differently in the future. So here I've slowed it down a little bit just so you can see how the uh, material is flowing. Uh, it It's uh, interesting because it also gets a little foamy as I'm brushing it in. Uh, but that seems to settle out on its own uh, pretty quickly and I don't end up with uh, bubble spots or, or similar. Uh, so let's speed this back up so you can uh, see a little more of the process. And there I'm using a, <clears throat> a small battery powered fan to help accelerate the drying in the cave uh, because uh, it, I want to keep working on it and the cave is going to take time to dry because it's so enclosed. Again, and this is particularly difficult, um, getting this wash into all of the uh, rocks, sort of talus along the bottom, is uh, particularly challenging and particularly important uh, because I've left all of those voids. So uh, that was something that I, I went over a couple times. Now, here I'm going with a second wash and You'll notice, I think I slow it down here in a second, that it is flowing much, much more easily. And this time I added some jet dry to it. And here you can see it at a slightly slower speed. Notice how it's really rolling into all of those cracks so much more easily. Uh, the uh, jet dry, which is a uh, washing machine um, additive, it's a much, much better surfactant than uh, alcohol and it was uh, a choice I wish I had made for the first coat, but nevertheless, um, off, I, off I go again. The uh, second coat of the tempera wash is to um, really emphasize the cracks more. I didn't feel like um, they were dark enough the first time, so um, I really wanted to go back. And here you can see what the final effect looked like after the wash. Uh, you can see some streaking on some of the rocks and uh, some dark areas. Now here, I'm going in and I am wiping off the tempera paint. Uh, this is the point where you can act as a, um, act in, in shading the rocks. 
And so um, by wiping the surfaces, you leave, of course, the tempera behind. And tempera never loses its workability. Uh, if you re-wet it, it's workable. So um, I'm using a damp rag, and I'm uh, basically, uh, you know, hitting the high spots. Um, I have to rinse the rag regularly. There's a bucket beneath me that I'm using. And you, you know, you have the option of, of removing as much as you want or, or not. And so I'm uh, really trying to wipe off the high spots and, uh, and use it to make some gradual shading along the way. If you really rub the surface too aggressively, you can begin to remove the gesso. Uh, and so there is a limit to how aggressive you can be, but you'd be surprised. Um, and of course it depends on, on the material the gesso has been applied to, but uh, it's, it's quite robust um, and surprisingly so. And here I am using a wet brush to uh, further blend the tempera in the cracks um, to try to um, even it out to try to get it to uh, cover some of the spots that the wash didn't. Because of these nooks and crannies, uh, there were plenty of spots that remained um, un untempered. <laughs> so I really had to go in and I had to go in and uh, definitely touch up a lot of those areas. And what I ended up doing is, is taking some material from areas that had too much and then bringing them over with the brush to areas that didn't have enough. So I was kind of a little here, a little there. Uh, mix it up, move it around uh, to try to blend it and to um, give it a little bit more uh, uniform appearance in the cracks and to cover those empty spots. And here's a look at how it looked at the end. I wish this photo was a little bit more clear. So I hope you enjoyed that look. I wrote a monthly column on Patreon that um, talks about my thoughts and techniques on painting the Bragdon style. Um, I did not end up painting these in that style. So if you're interested in seeing more on a different way of handling uh, post this kind of a shading, then you can go to my monthly columns or my Patreon page. And if you go to the posts page, there are now tags. Uh, wait, they are going to be this side. And they, um, one of the tags is um, for monthly columns, or it might be in the featured list. And they will take you to the whole list. It's an older column. So you have to kind of scroll down a bit to go and find it, but it will be painting rocks the Bragdon style or something like that and uh, you can get a little more information a little slightly different information about it there quick question I cannot see my copy wait <laughs> how do I explain this it's not that complicated when I leave comments on somebody else's channel I never can tell if they've ever replied to them. I'm using TubeBuddy right now for my comments. It only does comments on my channel. And I was using um, Gmail. And then I set some settings up to try to like turn off some of the stuff that was coming into it. Now I don't know. I don't even know how I did that. And I, anyway, what I'm asking <laughs> is if you have a good, easy way that you get notified. For instance, when you leave a comment here and I reply and you're like, oh, Mike replied. Uh, how do you do that? Let me know. Before I get 75 of the same tips though, um, you know, take a quick look in the top like 10 comments and see if somebody's already explained the way you do it. Uh, but that's not to discourage you, but only to say, you know, save yourself some time. I'm trying to save you time. Uh, but questions and comments, always welcome down below. Uh, always appreciate them. I actually got caught up on comments recently. That's a, a rarity. I'm behind now, but uh, that's unusual. And you may want to um, check out Patreon uh, beside the monthly column to see uh, some of my daily posts, almost daily, for the projects that I'm working on, the Orc board in this case. It happens to be right there. Uh, and I, it's something new I'm doing, so almost every day um, I take a photo of what I did last night or what I did the morning of or, you know, sometimes every other day. And I put in, I try to send 
keep myself to only five minutes, clickety click, and usually it's like 10. But I give a little blurb about what happened, what I was doing, thoughts, where I want to go, that kind of idea. So if you're interested in that kind of behind the scenes following, uh, then you could become a patron on Patreon, and at any support level, you get access to that. Uh, and Patreon informed me um, a few weeks back, my Patreon page is more active than 95% of the other creators part of Patreon. And I thought, that's pretty, that's pretty cool. Uh, I was like, oh my God, no wonder, because I put, I put time into that. You know, I use Patreon in ways that nobody else does, I think, and I think that shows there. Um, and it's not just me. There are community posts. People are posting stuff. So there's a lot going on there. Um, and uh, Patreon recognized that. They didn't give me an, a reward or an award or any kind of extra bonus. They just said, kudos. But I'll take it. Anyway, that uh, link will show up in the end slate, which comes at the last 20 seconds, which is new based on YouTube's new end slate thing they've set up. I don't want to get into it but I'm adapting. So before I go, I just want to say thank you so much for joining me. Uh, it's been a while since I've been behind the camera and I'm a little rambly, but I appreciate your uh, uh, attendance, viewership, sticking with me. And I encourage you to keep an eye on the channel uh, because I will be back soon with another Terrence Gapes video.